Hey, what's going on guys? So in today's video, I need to tell you guys what's been up with the Tika. So I have a Tika T3X. Some of you may not even know that. Um, it started life as a 243 Winchester. And then last year I decided to rebarrel it. Um, originally it was a 243. I was going to rebarrel it to a tighter twist um, and possibly go to a 243 Ackley Improved. But with the cost of doing a new barrel and stock and changing out the profile of the barrel and all that stuff, um, I could change calibers for the same cost initially, and then I would get more long range performance than just a 243 Ackley. A little more energy on target, things like that. Um, I didn't have a harder hitting caliber than 243, so to go after like big game or something, uh, it would have been nice to have a little more energy on target. So after going back and forth everybody on YouTube, uh, I ended up going with the 7mm Winchester Short Mag. Um, I had a barrel put on my Tika that was inch and a quarter up by uh, the action, and then it tapered down to 0.9 at the 26 inch mark of the barrel. Now when you get a barrel blank, you have to chop an inch off both ends, and uh, so I had a nice big bull barrel. It was really good looking, it was high polish. Uh, one to eight twist to help stabilize these great big heavy target bullets. So I want to shoot the 180 grain 7 millimeters. These, this is a long bullet. This thing's got a crazy high ballistic coefficient. 7 millimeters are very efficient uh, bullets in the lineup of like 6'5", 30 cals. Uh, 7 millimeters got the weight and the ballistic coefficient. So you get a little more weight with a 7 mil than you would with a 6'5". So you can really stretch out your distance if you're trying to make a long range hunting shot, if that's something you're into. Um, so I went with the WSM and I had a couple issues with the chamber that was put in the rifle. Basically the uh, bullet was contacting the lands and grooves of the rifling it went in really short distance. So it was forcing me to put a ton of bullet down into this case. Like the boat tail uh, starts below the shoulder on this case, um, which is an issue. It takes up case internal volume, which increases pressure, and I was getting pressure signs on the low end of all the suggested data. So I loaded up some hunting rounds to Sammy spec um, overall length, and I was crushing the bullet into the lands by like 20 and 30 thousandths. And so I was like, you know what, I'm done with this. I'm going to send this off to a gunsmith. Now I couldn't decide what I wanted to do once it got to the gunsmith, so it sat there for a while. Um, I had considered uh, rechambering the rifle in 7 WSM, you'd have to like cut off the chamber and put a new one in, which would shorten the barrel and reduce my muzzle velocity. I thought about uh, stretching the throat of the rifle or completely coming up with something different, like changing to a 300 min mag. Um, but what I ended up doing, uh, th there's two things I didn't like about it. Is uh, like I say, the throat in it was super short and it was causing me issues. The second one was brass availability. When I first got the WSM, I picked up 50 pieces of Hornady, which was new for 2018, and uh, I, that was like the only brass I ever found for the WSM, and it was really expensive. It was like $65 for 50 pieces of uh, w, of WSM brass, and when it got there, it didn't seem like the the kind of brass that merited that price. It was really exp it was expensive. And uh, I had like gone through and weighed some of the cases, and I have the data sitting right in front of me here. Um, if you just weigh random cases and see like uh, what the average weight is, and then you can you can get online, you can go and do a web search for a standard deviation calculator. It's quite a long math process, so you just let the internet take care of it. It's really nice. And I was getting a standard deviation of 1.5 grains from case to case. Uh, in weight difference, which is not that great. So, like, let's see, I weighed out some Creedmoors the other day. Um, some of them, the SD on the weight was 0.43 for one brand, 0.94 for another brand, and 0.30 for another brand. So we're talking 0.4 grains, almost a grain, and then 0.3 grains. And then you go to the WSM and I'm getting 1.5 grains. Now it is a bigger case and it weighs more so maybe there's more room for variability. But when I compared the new brand of brass that I went with, I, I switched to Atlas Development Group because they just started offering the line of short action ultra mag cartridges. So I've got a 7mm short action ultra mag box of brass here. And there's a couple things that are great about this. It's 
higher quality, it's run under tighter quality control, and it's available. Those are three really awesome things to have. So Atlas Development Group came through on this. They don't offer a line of WSM as of right now, so I switched to the 7mm Short Action Ultra Mag. So one of the first things I did is I took it and weighed it, and the SD of the WSM brass is 1.5. The SD in the weight variation on the SOM is 0.72, so it's literally half of what the Hornady was, and uh, I feel like this is way higher quality. So Atlas Development Group um, uses a striking process where they work hard in the head of the case, which makes your primer pockets last longer. Uh, this really high quality brass, it comes in uh, polished. This is their bright finish. You can tell by the way that they package their stuff and they ship it to you, and when it gets there, you can just tell that they have a passion for it. That's what I really like about Atlas Development Group. And they make great products. I'm not gonna sit here and push stuff if I think it's crap. I can't do that, because I'm using it. I'm not gonna sit there and use crap when I have other options available. And I think Atlas Development Group really makes good stuff, as you can tell, I'm a fan. So, I switched to the seven millimeter short action Ultramax. What does that really mean? There's a few big differences in the cartridges. So one of them is overall length, which we're going to cover. So the WSM is 2.09. The short action ultra mag is 2.02. .02. So it's quite a bit shorter, even though they're both short mags. So as we look at this brass, the WSM is this guy over here, and the short action ultra mag is this guy over here. What, one of the biggest differences you're going to see is the shoulder placement on this brass. So the WSM's shoulder is stretched out way up here. That's going to give you more powder volume, as well as there's less taper in the WSM case than there is on the short action ultra mag. So the, the short action ultra mag is more of a cone shape, which will cut out uh, more powder capacity up near the shoulder. So this is almost a straight wall case. It's, it's got a really aggressive shoulder angle on it. I think it's uh, 35 degrees in the shoulder angle on the short action ultra mag is a 30 degree shoulder. Um, when I first got the WSM that was one of the reasons for me choosing that is uh, it should help stop uh, case stretch when you're shooting. However when you push the shoulder way up here versus uh, holding it back a little bit further um, you really lose the neck length on the brass and that neck length is important when you have long target bullets and you're trying to stretch out your bullet to the lands and then as your bore erodes you want to be able to stretch that bullet out and chase your lands. Um, it will make your rifle last longer or your, it'll make your barrel last longer. So you have a lot longer length uh, with the SOM and really like that's the argument for the 6.5x47 Lapua versus the Creedmoor is the neck is a little bit longer on the Lapua. The Creedmoor still has a great case design um, I think it's even better than like the 260 rim is, I believe. So case neck length is important in an overall design. Um, what, what I'm actually sacrificing going to the SOM is, uh, is, overall, is overall velocity. It can't quite hold as much powder. We're going to lose about five grains-ish depending on what powder you use, what bullet you're shooting shooting the 180 grains. Um, in my Hornady load data manual, they have load data for the 175 grain hunting bullets, so I'm just using that as a reference. Um, for H4831, uh, on the short action ultra mag, 175 grain bullets, H4831, the max listed charge is 57 grains at 2700 feet a second. If we go to the WSM, using H4831, 175 grain bullets, you're up to 62 at 2,800 feet a second. So we're, we might lose about 100 feet a second doing this. And then powder capacity, you're losing like six grains. Not a big surprise, you take out six grains of powder, you're gonna lose some velocity, makes sense. But it is a very efficient cartridge. So you're using a little bit less powder, you're losing a little bit of velocity, but the amount of powder you put into it, you're getting really awesome performance out of that 57 grains. It's really well worth it. It's a great, uh, efficient cartridge. Um, so I'm really excited to switch over to the seven millimeter SOM. Uh, I've heard great things about it from like long range shooters of Utah, uh, 
few other people I follow on Instagram are big fans of it. And so what I'm doing is my Tika currently right now is at Match Grade Machine. They're a, a, a barrel manufacturer based in southern Utah, and they're going to help me put my rifle together. Um, I'm using one of the Match Grade Machine barrels. We we're doing a new barrel, one to eight twist, 26 inch long, inch and a quarter up by the action. It's going to taper down to 0.950 of the muzzle. So it's going to be a really big, heavy bull barrel. It's going to be freaking awesome. So they're going to be using five hour rifling in my rifle. And I sent them a dummy round with an overall length on the 180 set to where I want. And so we're going to chamber it for seven millimeter SOM. And then they're going to punch out the throat a little bit longer so that it has room for the 180s. But the bullet isn't going to be smashed way down into the case. So I'm going to get more room for powder compared to my WSM. So honestly, before when I was pushing that bullet way down in the case, I was probably losing a few grains worth of uh, room. I was probably losing room in the case to put that extra few grains of powder. So by switching to the SOM and stretching the throat out, I will be able to increase my velocities compared to maybe a normal standard SAMI spec SOM and uh, I might pick some of that velocity back up with these 180s. So we're going to find out. Um, previously I was shooting 180 grains out of my WSM at 2900 feet a second, but that was a hot load. The, pl the primers were getting flattened and I was having hard or stiff bolt extraction. So we're going to have to wait and see how that goes. but. Match Grade Machines putting this rifle together for me. Um, I'm also getting a new stock for the rifle. I'm gonna be getting uh, some new optics for it. Um, I, d I don't have either in hand yet, so I'm gonna wait to kind of tell you guys what those are until I have them, just cause I don't wanna make myself look bad saying that I'm getting something when I don't end up getting that. So we're gonna hold off a little bit, but I want you guys to come with me on this journey. I'm gonna tell you and document the whole process of taking a rifle and having it totally customized. Um, we're going from a custom Tika rifle that just ended up not working out for me. The chamber had issues with it. Um, and so we're going to do new muzzle brake. Um, we're going to get that thing put on the action. We're going to get our action put into a new home and then we're going to get a new optic on it. It's going to be really exciting. Last year, my goal was to take my seven millimeter out to 2000 yards. I was able to get out to a mile with my six, five Creedmoor, um, but unfortunately the Tika just wasn't working right. Um, I never got it to shoot a grid group. Uh, so my goal for 2019 is to get to 2000 yards and get rounds on plate. I will make sure that happens by the end of 2019, whether I have to try it with the Creedmoor or not. But um, I'm really excited to get this thing out. This thing should be supersonic out to crazy far uh, distances. Obviously I don't know my velocity just yet, but it should be anywhere from like 1900 to 2100 yards supersonic, which will make sh making that 2000 yard flight a little bit easier than the Creedmoor at a mile because you're dropping subsonic at like 1400 to 1500 in the Creedmoor. And then it travels the last couple hundred yards subsonic, which can destabilize a bullet. Um, so with a seven millimeter, it should be getting there supersonic with way more energy on target as well. Cause it's going to be going above the speed of sound with a heavier bullet getting there as well as a higher ballistic coefficient bullet, so it will be fighting wind better the entire flight. All around, it's it's a really awesome little cartridge, and we're doing it with just 55, 60 grains of powder, depending on what you're using. Um, obviously, we're gonna have to work our way up to that and figure it out, at which point the load data will probably be just a little skewed for my rifle specifically because of that stretched out throat. So, this is the start of the Tika project. That's really all I have right now is short action ultra mag brass. Um, my rifle's down south from where I'm at. Um, I'm really excited to get this put together. I've been wanting to do this for over a year now. It started in 2017, uh, Black Friday. I was able to buy Boyd stock on sale. I uh, got a barrel online, got it put together by March of 2018. And by June of 2018, I had decided to throw in the towel on that one. It just wasn't working out for me. So it's early January 2019 right now. Um, I just got a little dummy round put together for a uh, match grade machine to have them set the lands just about 20 thousandths off the end of the bullet here. Whew. I'm excited, guys. So that's really all I have to share with you at the moment. Um, I really am excited to try out this Atlas Development Group 7 SOM. 
I'm excited to have brass available for it as well as high quality brass. Um, if you guys are interested in any of the ADG lineup, I have a discount code available, WDS10 for 10% off of your brass. They make 6.5 Creedmoor, 260 Remington, 6.5 SOM, 7mm SOM. If you're looking right now, uh, this is actually some of the first that has come off the line, but within the next few weeks it should be available. So check when the video is posted versus when you're watching it, because that might be available at that point. Um, but they really get into the Magnum cases as well. Uh, Remington Ultra Mags, 338 Edge, 338 Lapua, 375 Ultra Mag. Great stuff. Um, they did send me some brass. I'm gonna make some dummy rounds out of them to be able to show you guys at a later point. So that's it for now. Um, I appreciate you watching. I hope you're excited. I really wanna get out to 2,000 yards. I'm gonna bring you guys along the journey. So we'll catch you guys next time and uh, hopefully more good news on the TK coming soon.